Okay, my little shoulder. All righty. Well, we are prepping, prepping, prepping. We got three more minutes before we go live. I just want to make sure that I have all of my, oh, I figured out this new thing. Live video. Live on Facebook. Go live. Do I have to do this? Go live anyway. Let's see. Okay, let's see. What is it looking like here? That brings us back into Zoom. Webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. Welcome everyone out there on Facebook if you're seeing us. We don't have our uh, intern in-house that is would be able to answer our chat on Facebook. So we are going to just Definitely, I, we have another participant and an attendee there. Oh, that's your, okay, so we will leave that there. And welcome, you guys. Lucy, now. Hey there. Hello, hello. Yes, we're getting ready. We're just prepping everything to get ready for the show. Of course, you know, my name is Linda Sam, and this is my co-host. Aaron Taco Sam on Facebook to most of you out there in Facebook. <laughs> they call me Taco, but you can call me Tony. Tony. <laughs> All right. And so I was hoping that a girlfriend would come on and um, to be able to tell us about our lighting and our picture. And maybe if we move it up closer, it gives us a better view of us. And I decided to switch to this side which is a little different than normal, but it looks pretty good this way. <laughs> you're, you're looking fine. Fabulous, fabulous. So we are over there on Facebook, somewhere in Facebook land. So let's see, while I go over here and check and see if my friends are over there. Miss Barbara Lindsay, if you're over there, can you moderate that chat room for us? Let's see. It's over here. We're not there yet. Bobby, these ladies are so tech savvy. I'm telling you, I thought, I figured you might be too. No. <laughs> I'm not. No. No, he, he stays away from technology as much as possible. So I need to look this way. Well, we try to keep Bobby away from it as much as possible. See how they do us, Bobby? Yes, indeed. But that's a good thing because you have us. Thank you don't God need, for them. You don't yes. need it. <laughs> so it is now 2 o'clock. So I'm not going to worry about the Facebook. It shows that we are live. Hopefully everyone is out there watching us. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Candid Conversations with Couples. My name is Linda Sam, and this is my wonderful co-host, who won't be doing a lot of talking, but he's here for the support. <laughs> we are opening. Because uh, where else is he going to go right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, he is our opening entertainment for the show. And so we're going to go ahead and let him get started as those, as everyone starts coming into the Zoom. We'll give him a couple of minutes because we're just, right on time at two o'clock. Welcome, you guys. Welcome in to Candid Conversations with Married Couples, 55 plus and over. Yes, we are celebrating staying married. We're going to stay married during this COVID. We don't know what the news is talking about. We don't care what the CNN is talking about with all the people looking to go to be divorced. All my friends that are married, we're staying married and we're going to be married even after COVID, you just watch out for that. But uh, <laughs> so when we decided to do this show, of course, we would have been in our studio and COVID hit. So voila, we are here at home in our home studio, making sure that we keep this going. And I am so excited today to have my guest couple today are married. I'm getting to our jazz family. 
Honey, your microphone is reverberating. I hear it. But this is my jazz family that is here as couples. We have several um, couples that are married in our jazz and blues community. And this is our first couple that we've had up. This is, please welcome, help me to welcome, Bobby and Rita Spencer. All right, yay. Hey, hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, it has been a- No, speaking of being married, we're coming up on a uh, five-year wedding anniversary on June 28th. So we're, we're just moving right in there on it. Absolutely. Right. Well, great. Well, we are newlyweds. We just got married in December of this past year. So we're going on our sixth month. Is that six? Right. Uh, December, January, February, March, April, May. Five months. It, time, <laughs> time is going by so fast you can't even understand and keep up with it. <laughs> but yes, and so our married tribe, 55 plus couples only, is a community. We're building a community of couples who we could rely on, who we can connect with, who we can communicate with, and share our intimate conversations with because being a mature couple over 55 we share certain things that other couples don't so that's why i have dubbed this the candid conversations with couples and we are all over 55 years of age not 55 years married but just the age and I got so a fake id <laughs> <laughs> and so we're gonna open up the show with uh the entertainment portion it's a, a couple of minutes afterwards <laughs> and then all of those who are joining us are joining us live so honey we'll go ahead and get started with you opening up the show here you have it taco sam live all right all right a little something ho hopefully you like it Moon River, wider than a mile. I'm crossing you in style someday. You old dream maker, you heartbreaker. Wherever you're going, I'm going your way. Two drifters off to see the world. There's such a lot of world to see. We're after the same rainbows in, waiting round the bend. My huckleberry friend, Moon River, and me. Knock it off, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you old dream maker, you heartbreaker, wherever you're going, I'm going your way. Two drifters off to see the world, there's such a lot of world to see. We're after that same rainbow's in. All right. Waiting round the bend, my huckleberry friend, Moon River. All right. Oh, oh. You got a nice voice, man. 
Thanks yeah. a lot, Bobby. What? Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. There. Hey, he's a professional. You, you ain't, you ain't new to this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got some chops, boy. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Okay, here. What is this thing going? Well, haywire. Uh, come back here. Zoom camera. Okay, there we go. And now that was my honey, Taco Sam, giving us a rendition of Moon River. Thank it you. It was great. That right, was well, great. And was so great. I am so happy again to have you, Bobby and Rita, on the show. Honey, turn that off for me, please. It's reverberating. Thank you. I hear it. Reverberating. Yeah, reverberating. <laughs> you hear that echoey in my voice. <laughs> Um, and so I have decided that we, during this COVID, COVID-19, that we are going to talk as couples about how are we coping with COVID. It's, it's different for everyone. Everyone have different sit situations, different scenarios, different living situations. And so it's just great to be able to bring us on and to be able to share with our friends and family how we're coping. So I know that it's uh, been a little while now. So Rita, you can jump in here and tell us a little bit about what's been going on in the Spencer household. <laughs> well, the Spencer household got a head start on uh, being locked down. Because, as you know, with Bobby having a stroke in October and coming home in December, there are eight stairs outside that uh, kind of were keeping us locked down. Until Bobby was able to make it down the stairs, we were locked down pretty good. So uh, we got a head start. So uh, when we went into quarantine, what was that, the first week of March that we decided to self-quarantine? We, we decided early to go into quarantine. Uh, we turned off the um, physical therapy people coming in, the shower nurse, the home health nurse, because we just didn't know where they'd been, except we knew they'd been out there with some other people who were needing help. So we thought, okay, we can do this on our own. So we have. Um, that's, I, I guess, would be the first thing to say. And then, how about you, Bobby? I. I agree with everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> he does this. He, he's the one who's the entertainer and, and on stage. But, you know, there's music, but we'll get into a little bit more about the music. But really, doing the physical therapy on our own without any outside help, you know, walking down the stairs, going up on Sunset Boulevard. We're just one block off of Sunset. We're right by Guitar Center. And uh, so I push him up there and with our masks, with our gloves, and he walks for a you know better part of a block, and with, so with a walker, with a walker, yeah, he, <laughs> he and the wheelchair right behind him. Oh, I'm pulling the wheelchair. That's and awesome. So that's one thing. So we get out in the sun a little bit, but it's just been amazing to us the outpouring of love and community and everything during this time. We're fortunate we live in an apartment building with just 18 units. And we have a little app here that a bunch of us are on. And so I got lucky and got a bunch of uh, sanitizing wipes and I put it out there on the app and I said, hey, I got quite a few of these. Does anybody need some? So then I ended up trading some of those for some hand sanitizer and and one lady said okay how are you doing on laundry because we have to have quarters and so she brought me some quarters and um you know we have a little table outside where uh right outside our door our, we have a courtyard right in the middle so we all look on the courtyard and i'll tell you one thing they do they all open their doors when bobby does his practicing it drives him nuts to know they're listening, but they love it. But they're musicians too. We have actresses and uh, uh, you say actress and life coaches and marketing people and a wonderful young uh, uh, guitar player 
here. Well, she's really like quite community. It's a fabulous. Most of them are under 35. We're the old folks in the building. Next door, we got a guy who plays musicals, uh, like, name a musical. Well, yeah, he was doing uh, cabaret. He's, and he's a voice coach as well. And then across the courtyard, we've got a classical. Classical uh, pianist. Pianist. So there's just music here all the time, which we love. That's uh, great. That but then, Bobby, what's your favorite thing to do during this lockdown? Uh, talk with Rita. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he talks with his mentor, Johnny Talbot. When they get on the phone, I mean, a two-hour phone call is nothing at all. And I, I've never known men to talk like this. And I told him, <laughs> look, I can just record this thing, and we'll call and hit the, record, uh, the play button because the conversation doesn't change much. It's the same conversation almost every time. <laughs> and then um, the grandkids have called us to do FaceTime. So we've had that. And we've been very fortunate. You know, before we went into lockdown, we had Vista Street Jazz going on over here. So many musicians came to play with Bobby. Uh, Mark Tabard and Paul Kennedy and Jeff Dale and David Leach and uh, George Van Wagner and Michael Bayona. A sax man. David Leach. My other sax man. Oh, Pat Zagari. How could I miss him? <laughs> and Nick Santangelo. And they all would come by because, quite honestly, when Bobby was in the hospital, I told him I didn't know I, how I was going to get him out of the bed when we got home because when he gets bored, the bed was his friend. So they all came over. We had a regular Tuesday night thing and they helped him. Well, then once the lockdown, then we couldn't have them coming in anymore. I know. So, um, um, so now Bobby's practicing to some play along tapes and things. That's, um, that's the, been the big the, thing. With the uh, the real book, which is the fake book of, of jazz players, they have a series of recordings with just a rhythm section. So some of the things you've heard me play, I'm playing with that with that uh, with that playing. What do you call it? I don't even can't call it. It's the a Hal Leonard um, real book. Yeah. But we played that. That I I love this. Now, uh, Tony, listen yes. up because I know you're going to be able to follow these instructions. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm kidding. So what I do is I use OneDrive on my computer. I have all the music there. Actually, I have it on a USB drive. So I have that. And then so through OneDrive, I'm able to use Bobby's phone and go to my computer and find the songs. Then I have Bobby's phone plugged into the amplifier. So then... I can play the music loud enough that he can still hear it while he's blowing his sax. Mm -hmm. And so that way we entertain the whole building. Uh, one of the neighbors sent a video the other night of her dog laying out on the patio, listening to Bobby's music. So, wow. <laughs> but the good news is he never practices more than an hour. So, <laughs> so they're not gonna be bothered by noise, but tell me where else, I mean, it's amazing that we can, that Bobby can blow his horn here. We, we had to move from one building and we were unable to get into another because nobody allows you to play. So Bobby used to have to go out to studios and stuff, but this building allows him to play. Well, that is such an added benefit for the tenants Absolutely. to be able to hear great music from a blues legend, jazz and blues <laughs> legend right up in there. You know what I'm saying? So they think it's great. They are blessed. They definitely are. And so I know that for us being newlyweds of five months and we live in a little small flat, having to, to uh, share our space becomes challenging at times because I'm used to being out of the house most of the time. And, you know, he used to um, being in the studio. He works at, um, with singers in the studio most of the time. And so just being locked down and not having that uh freedom to do that has made it challenging as a couple and so we know that coping and being locked down is a challenge but of course um we have our music and so when i incorporated him 
being a part of the show and singing and doing what he loves, that helps to break up the monotony of being locked down as well. And so I applaud you, Rita, for keeping Bobby active, you know, because most people, he, he doesn't even look like he had a stroke six months ago. So you have done an amazing job in helping him through rehabilitation to getting back on track. So oh, thank you, Linda. You know, it's all about, a lot of it is all about good food. And, you know, when he was in the hospital, his blood pressure was very high. And it was because of the hospital food, even though he was on a no-salt diet. Well, they wouldn't put any salt on the entree, but the mashed potatoes and whatever else came with it had plenty of salt. And since we've been home uh, with the way that we eat, and because we don't use salt, we don't use sugar, and we eat lots of plants, we're a plant-based diet. And I mean, like this morning, his blood pressure was 118, while ago it was 115. I mean, that's amazing. We've been able to take him off of at least one blood pressure medication. So it's, awesome. it's a lot about taking care of yourself. And from what I hear, that helps your immune system and that will help you fight the COVID if you get it. Right. Keeping your, keeping your immune system. And that's some of the things that, you know, I appreciate about him. He loves greens. So he oh, will yeah. cook greens. He will cook a big pot of greens and we'll eat on those greens for three or four days because he loves greens and salads and stuff like that. So Absolutely. we don't eat a lot of pork or um, other, only pork we eat is for breakfast because I love sausage and bacon. So <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get that porky in that way. <laughs> but it's, it's just being able to manage and keep our schedules in such a way that, you know, we got to, Thank God we have two TVs, you know, in case he wants to watch something different from what I want to watch. We are, we have that capability. But I, I know that, you know, couples are having a hard time where couples were used to having the husband gone all the time traveling, doing um, his business or ministers that traveled a lot who are now home and the wife is trying to cope like, will you go? walk the dog or go <laughs> to the church and will you go somewhere and you know get, get out of the house. Get out. <laughs> but it is amazing that I found that in talking and having these conversations, it's a great resource and a great outlet for us as married to be able to come together and to talk with one another. Now I know Bobby put has gotten a new song that I have I'm just loving. Loving, loving, loving. And I wanted to play that for our audience and let them tell us what they think of it. We do have someone in our room joining us, but um, she is there. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Barbara Lindsay, for joining us here on Zoom. This is my jazz and blues legends, Rita and Bobby Spencer. Bobby is a saxophonist, and he recently had a stroke six months ago, and his lovely wife, has used music to get him back in shape. And so I'm going to right now show and play his song that he is latest that's playing right now in the UK. So for those of you who, I'm not sure what's, um, if you're seeing us or if it's blacked out or anything, but just hold on for me. Let me pull that up. Uh, let's come on here. You're supposed to be ready to go there. Oh. Okay, so here we go here. But while while we're doing that, um, while I'm pulling it up, Rita, tell us how, who does the shopping for the family while I'm getting the video pulled up here? Well, you know, it's nothing new again. We, we never did grocery shopping for a long time. I hate going grocery shopping. So Instacart and yummy.com, that's, that's our best friends. But also uh, we've had some wonderful help. Um, someone dropped by uh, uh, Pat Zakari and Joan, they dropped off paper towels this weekend and a five pound bag of flour, which is just amazing. 
and uh, but and I've had lots of offers from people to go shopping for us. But you know, I don't want to put anybody else at risk more than they need to be. So Instacart has been pretty good. Right now, you can get Instacart delivered in about two to five hours. There was a time about two weeks ago when it would take five days to get groceries. So you had to be, you know, planning in advance and putting your order in in advance. But Instacart is how we handle everything. And we wipe it all down when it comes in, uh, you know, with, with uh, Clorox wipes. We wipe everything down. And, and, but we found people be very helpful. The um, Instacart shopper uh, will either text with me or call me and say, well, they don't have any of this, but how do you, how do you feel about that? And so I get them to read the labels and tell me how much sodium content is in the product they're trying to substitute. And if it's okay, then I'm like, sure, let's go with that. So like other people, I think we've had to try some new things that we would never have bought at the store as a substitute. And it's worked out pretty good. Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to see now if I'm going to be able to bring up this wonderful video. Enjoy. The road from Vega. A desert road from Vegas to nowhere. Some place place better than where you've been a coffee machine that needs some fixing in a little cafe just around the bend ah, 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 ah. Thank you. 
You bad, Tony. I don't know what you're talking Bob, about. Bobby, tell them how you did that video. Oh, yes. I had to. Well, I'm lip syncing, you know, and it, when you see me so look like I'm singing, you probably see me miss a couple of, <laughs> come in about a second late on a couple of them, but basically it's, it's I'm lip syncing to it because I recorded it, what, nine years ago? It, 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 it was recorded in 2009, 2009, but not released at that time. Um, okay. And then the producer, during this uh, COVID time, he called Bobby up and said, hey, let's do something with that song. And he's doing a whole series of these with other artists as well. Oh, that's and awesome. So uh, I shot the video on my iPhone here, and then we sent that to, against a click tra tape, click track. We sent that to Craig, and he put together this video. And then um, uh, we had some good response to it. So I said, okay, let's just go ahead and release that song. Yes. And put it out there that in a pre-release form and a DJ that He's been pretty good to Bobby over the years uh, from um, Rock Radio UK in London based. It's an international uh, uh, station, but they, um, they wanted to play it last Sunday. So we let them do it, even though it doesn't officially drop until May 15th. But then they, they told us that they're going to do an official launch of it uh, in London on May 15th as well. That's amazing. Well, Craig, Craig is fabulous. The the producer, he's just a great guy. Yeah, and, he, he and it's a great. We can move over a little bit so I can see you in the screen. Yes, that is. I when I first got the link, I played it and played it and played it. It is so soothing. I'm calling you, and it, it, and it's just so soothing. The words to it. So even. And Aretha, I always tell you this, you are amazing with your technology skills. Uh, <laughs> you are the blues promoter extraordinaire. And Bobby, I know you are thoroughly grateful to have Rita on your team. Yes. <laughs> uh, she is amazing. No, that's that's true. Yes, and, and so she does so much for the blues community that um other musicians and other artists, I know they appreciate all that she does. And so I just yes, want to do. give you your kudos, Rita, in terms of, I know you got mad skills. When you said you took your iPhone and recorded that? <laughs> hands down. Linda, if you could have seen this house, I had a big wicker trash can sitting on top of the bed and had my iPhone on a little tripod on top of the trash can so that I was trying not to show, uh, you know, Bob, Bobby wears a brace on one leg, trying not to show that and trying to get a good angle. And I had to send three different uh, screen angles. So, I mean, I was moving tables. The bed won't move. So, you know, we have the space that we have, and we had to work with that space. And it was quite a challenge, but it was a lot of fun. And, you know, that's what it's all about, is having some fun during this COVID. You know, one of the things that Bobby's doing is uh, tell him about what you're doing. Oh, yeah. I'm writing this score for a play based on Lang Langston Hughes' life and work. Oh. And uh, you may know him. Uh, Jersey George Kosek. He's from Poland. Oh, Actually, yes, I've seen I know him. that uh, he's a research guy. He's a professor over at UC Riverside. Riverside. Er, er, no, Riverside. yeah, Riverside. Right, Riverside. Right. And, and he has written musicals in the past and produced them in Does in it Poland. just do a, fact, a poetry night or yes, something? Yes, the Jazz and Poetry Cafe. Okay. Bobby and George have a connection with Coco Taylor. Uh, George produced 
the biggest jazz uh, festival, blues jazz festival in Poland, and Coco Taylor was on the bill. Well, Bobby wrote a song called Fish and Dirty Water that Coco Taylor recorded on her Grammy, no nem Grammy nominated album, Force of Nature. So they have that Coco Taylor thing in, in, um, in common. common and they've hit it off. And so Bobby has been busy writing, writing, writing uh, songs for this play. So then, because we're locked down, how are we going to get this stuff done? So there's a program, a musical notation program called Sibelius. And so I talked to our music director, Andrea Velestra, and he's the one who's creating the, the rhythm tracks to go with the songs that Bobby writes. I asked him what program he used, and he said Sibelius. So I got Sibelius. Oh, yeah. And, uh, is I have learned how to with Bobby sitting by my side to, uh, here's the deal. If Bobby would write the music in a way that anybody could read it, he <laughs> wouldn't have to sit by my side and tell me, I want to be natural there going to a dotted quarter note with a G there, but I can't read his handwriting. So he has to sit right beside me on the computer. And when we printed out that first piece of shoot music, it was like, wow, look at us. We're something. <laughs> We're feeling pretty good about that. That is amazing that you guys have... Kudos again. You don't understand how many 55 plus anybody who has technical skills. And for you guys to be able to do the things that you need to be able to do musically, that is amazing. Yeah, it's great. And, you know, we can, we've done some little mashups. I mean, where Bobby's on the keyboard over here, he does a little piano thing. And then I'm playing it off of the computer and I got my iPhone taking a picture there. And then we're, and, and then we're taking a track that the music director sent to us and we're mashing it all up and putting it into something that we can send to the playwright and say, hey, do you like this concept for this song? One of my favorites, and I'm just going to say it. I, oh, George, I, if you're listening, I hope you don't mind. But uh, this comes directly from Langston Hughes, is I am a Negro. Black as the night is black. I am a Negro. Black like the depths of my Africa. And so I went on YouTube and found a rhythm track of some conga drums. And uh, I was playing that YouTube off of through the amp off of one of the phones uh, I, one of the phones was playing that then it got bobby over on the piano doing some really cool stuff on top of that and singing the words and i'm capturing that with my other phone so we couldn't live without two phones around here <laughs> mm -hmm. we need them as technical tools mm -hmm. tony i'm still blown away with your singing man you got to be kidding, man. No, man, you, you, you blew my mind. You can blow. <laughs> well, you know, your phrasing, your phrasing is just magnificent. Well, thanks a lot. I should certainly appreciate that. Yeah, yeah he was a Delphonics. He was a former Delphonic back in the day. Oh, yeah, I can tell. Good yeah. God. Those days are gone, though. I stay in my lane now. I'm down here. I'm a baritone, and that's where I stay. Yeah, but still. What you, it ain't so much whether you're a baritone or not, it's what you do with that baritone. I'm actually a baritone, too. Actually, that's baritone. how he met me, Bobby. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Singing to me. Singing to me. I told him, I said, let me tell you something. You better wow. keep singing to me, because that's how you that's, caught me. She was in the front oh. row. <laughs> <laughs> that's what all I about love it. What's it all about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I, I did have, um, let me see, we have, how are you guys handling, um, we talked a little bit about where do you guys go, how is your house, your layout, is it one flat, you have a two bedroom, one bedroom? We have one bedroom, but we have never used it. I've had a granddaughter live there for about a year and a half. We had Bobby's son here for about six months. 
We've had uh, another couple who um, had some construction going on at their house. And so they stayed with us for a couple of months. And um, you know, that's where our clothes are, are in a closet in there. But other than that, we're all in one big room out here. Um, the it bed, must be the awfully television. huge. What? It must be awfully huge. It must be awfully huge. It is huge. What, the minute, let me tell you, you know, you saw that picture of the Bougainvillea out in front of, of the apartment. Yes. We were driving by. We had been over. We were looking for an apartment. We were desperate to get an apartment. We just got married. We needed a place. And we were over at Aroma Bakery on Sunset. And I said, well, let's just drive around this neighborhood. The, the truth is we had come up the night before. I think Ray Gorin was playing at the Mint. And we didn't want to, at that time, we were staying with uh, uh, some relatives down in Yorba Linda. And we didn't want to drive home that night. So we stayed up here in uh, probably a Motel 6. It was a Motel 6. <laughs> on, uh, right off of Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, so we went over to Roma to have breakfast and said, well, let's drive around this neighborhood. And when I saw that bougainvillea out there in front and the whole little front area is full of roses and hibiscus and this and that, I'm like, oh my God, there's a for rent sign. Let's go check it out. So I called the woman and she let us come in. And when she opened the door and we saw how huge this room is, over way against the uh, east wall, I have a couch and... Uh, couple of uh, wicker dressers. Then we've got a huge California, um, what do you call it, sleep by, sleep by number bed, uh, which we had to have for Bobby's uh, sleep apnea because it raises up and down. He has congestive heart failure, so we needed that. So that, and then I've got my office, which we're look, looking at the big computer here. And then right behind me is uh, a big, a, a small dining room table, and then piano and all of Bobby's music stuff back there. So it is one huge room. It looks like it, and it, it helps to be able to even just, you know, have the space that you can sprawl out in and not be all crunched up on each other during this time, because, you know, you, you're going to need your space to just be with yourself or he needs space to just be by himself. And so we're coping too as well. And we have a one bedroom, we're upstairs. And so um, having to, my office, transport our living room into my office space. And, you know, of course we have the bedroom where he has a TV. So it helps to keep us uh, connected, but disconnected. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's important as couples that we stay connected but we also have some space so that we can be able to you know do our own things so how has keeping busy with music helped you guys to to cope has that helped you really to cope more during this lockdown well because we come together on music and you know Risa, uh plays some basic piano and when she was young she sang she had a she she was offered a scholarship to a vocal scholarship to uh, what was it Wichita State University to Wichita State University, so she's got quite a bit of music in her. So we just we just have a lot of fun. She she's my best critic. She knows my stuff so good. I always tell her just pull that little alto. She used to play saxophone. Wow. I tell her I tell her she needs to get that alto and start playing. I, I tell you, you know all my best licks anyway. <laughs> well, the thing is, I am his biggest fan, but I am his second biggest critic. The first critic is him. He's very critical of his stuff. He doesn't like any of it most of the time. But when I hear him, especially if he's on the stage, and if I hear him doing the same old licks over and over and over, I'm like, Ooh, Bobby must be tired. And then I'll tell one of the other people, get up there and help Bobby and, you know, 
re-energizing here. <laughs> so I, I know when he's doing fabulous. And right now, you know, I took a, an alto saxophone up to the hospital to Hollywood Presbyterian uh, for therapy. And at that time, Linda, he couldn't lift it. I laid it on him and he put his fingers on, on the horn, but he couldn't even press a key down. He could not even press a key down and certainly couldn't have dealt with a tenor, but the doctors and the therapists all told us, just use that horn, use that horn as a reason to get better. And they tell us, you know, he recovered uh, opposite of how most people do. What? Most people were paralyzed on their left side. Their leg comes back first and then their upper body, then their, their shoulder, their elbow, their hand. First thing that came back was Bobby's hand. And that's because of all that playing that he's done over the years. So he recovered all of this part first and he's still working on the leg. Because the leg didn't play saxophone. If the leg had played saxophone, maybe it would be coming back faster. Maybe if he had had a kick drum or something. <laughs> That's right. But the, the amazing thing that God has kept him here to continue, he knew he got so much more music to get out of you, do. He said, nope, you ain't going nowhere. I just need to get better. <laughs> and so Thank that's you. the amazing things that we could even share as couples just being able to help each other through the health challenges and you yeah. know he had all these appointments going to the veterans hospital before the lockdown i just canceled them all i'm like whatever <laughs> whatever we are not going up in there so um just knowing that eating right helps him to to manage his you know, high blood pressure and all the stuff diabetes. that he has, diabetes that he has going on with yeah. him. So it does help to stay on track, to eat right, and to maintain. Absolutely. And if we go walking, our our little walk is is a trip down to the Seven Eleven down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I still, Tony, I still can't get over your singing, man. Oh man, come on! <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, as long as I've been in music. I know great phrasing when I hear it. And, and I just watch that. Hmm? And you have all that too. Well, I got a good excuse. I've been out there just constantly. Well, you must have been too. I'm just amazed at your voice and the way you use it. It's just woo. I know. It. So, and, and with that, Bobby, I'm so glad that you said that because I created a Facebook page for him called Taco Sam Live. And <laughs> he, has, he has people over there waiting for him. And so I ordered him this wonderful microphone <laughs> so he could sing. Right. He wouldn't sing. So that my next thing, I just ordered him a, a whole karaoke machine. With a, oh, with yeah. Microphone. Oh, God, yeah. You going to sing, bro, whether you That's like right. it or not. <laughs> you got the right woman there, man. You got the right lady. Don't we, though? <laughs> <laughs> I want to sing with you, Bobby. Hey, I'd love to do a duet with you, boy. Man. Good, good God. And you know, if we ever get back to Pips, um, Bobby's down at Pips every Saturday night from 11 to 1. Yeah. 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 Me, yeah. me and him need to record. Then you, then you need to come on down. No, we will. We will. Me, me and you need to record a duet together. Absolutely. It's done. I, we I, got one, I got one that'd be great for us. Uh, I recorded with this same guy. I, I wrote a song called Green Light. Green light. And it's a beautiful ballad. You know, it's like, we're sitting here like many times before, and the lights are turned down low, and you've just locked the door, baby. Oh, I oh look at that. We, we could trade off that lead and then have parts, and we go to the hook. Because when we get to the hook, it goes up high. I was, I was writing for people like Whitney Houston, was what, what I was trying to do, where you had them explosive hooks where the title is. Mm -hmm. Just, just say green light. Oh, girl, give me a sign. I can't wait to make you mine. I mean, you can blow the hell out of that, boy. All right. All right. Look what we have made, y'all. We have made history here talking about music, future songs. We got to figure this out, Rita, with all of our technology stuff here. Well, we, we can do it. We can do it. Get this done. 
That's Lord, yeah. It is amazing. Especially the way you sing with the with the the Delphonics. Uh huh. That, that's yeah. I can hear it in your phrasing. That sweet ballad style. Well, mm -hmm. well, Nat King Cole gave me all that. Oh, oh God, yeah. Oh, that's what a song. That's my guy. Oh. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh Lord, yes. I well, like you sure everything know, about it. You know how to phrase, boy. Yes. So I told him, I said, honey, your singing is, because he didn't realize, now, being a jazz and blues preservationist, I've been around singers all this past 10 years, and even prior to that, just festivals, mm -hmm. being able to be backstage and on different concerts and all of that, and none of that never really moved me. It never, it really never did. Until mm -hmm. here it is, this man, I'm sitting on the front row, have a drink. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I started walking towards her with the mic. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes, I got to. I got to have her. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> as soon as I chased all the guys away. <laughs> Anybody can sing, sing Moon River like that. That's not an easy song to sing well. Well, I certainly love it. I'll tell you that much. Oh, man, you sing the hell out of it. And I mm -hmm. like Alfie, too. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> See, the test of a hell of a singer is when you can sing them kind of ballads well. Yeah. Right. And he can sing the hell, hell out of that, that way you sing. So, Bobby, I'm glad that you are his big encourager now. Maybe you have helped him to realize and see that he needs to keep it going. That's my buddy. Oh, God, yeah. Bobby's my buddy. I've known him for what? How long now? <laughs> 30 minutes, I guess. No, I think it's, I think it's no, been a couple of years. But no, no, you, you can blow. You can blow. Thank you. And so... Thanks a lot, Bobby. We, um, we're, we're glad to have you guys here on the show. We generally go into a Q&A um, with those who join us on the... Uh, the uh, the, the uh, Zoom stream, um, but it doesn't look like that we have anyone joining us today, but that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we had fun. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Well, because I think I got it working on um, Facebook, so everyone's over there watching us on Facebook. I've asked one of my girlfriends to moderate if anybody had any comments or questions or anything that maybe she could... Um, you take a look and then text me. Um, All right. This is, you know, just being able to have us having these candid conversations, helping us to stay married. That's my goal is to create a platform for us to be able to share with one another, laugh with one another, enjoy each other's companies, even though we can't be in the same space with each other. But to be able to have this shared with our friends and families, and they can watch it after this, you know, it's in, what do they call it? It's out there forever for us to share. And oh, yeah. And being able to talk and laugh and, and now collaborate. Something Absolutely. that probably would have never thought about or, or been made happen for you guys to be able to work together. I know me and Rita will be right there by your side. <laughs> you know, we'll be, we we'll be right it. behind them. <laughs> yes. We will yes, take the y'all songs, uh, what do you call it? Take it, to, uh, gold sellers, platinum sellers. On oh, yeah, list. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I did want to tell you one thing, Linda. You know, it's thinking about what happened during this COVID quarantine. I, I don't know if you knew or not, uh, on April the 3rd and 4th, we were supposed to have been in Oakland. Uh, Bobby's star is now, it's, it's there on the Walk of Fame in Oakland. It's the music they played on 7th Street. And this, is, this has been a project that Ronnie Stewart put together and they've been working on it I don't know how many years, five, 10 years that they've been working on it. And the ceremony was scheduled for April 3rd. And we were supposed to be in Oakland for the ceremony to see Bobby's star revealed on the Walk oh. of Fame. So we'll be going up there just as soon as they lift this thing up. And I'll have Bobby stand there on his star and get a picture. And, yes. they, you know, this, this quarantine, I mean, 
it'll be there, whether we were there or not. I think about all these young people and their high school graduations and their proms and things and what they've missed. But I think what we've gained has been really good too. And that is this sense of community, mm -hmm. this closeness together. For Bobby and I, we were just go, 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 go. People kept saying to us, oh, you're everywhere, you're gigging everywhere. And I said, well, it's really an illusion. We're really not that busy. Guess what? I guess we were. <laughs> I guess we were that busy. So come October, you know, we got the big smack down and uh, with Bobby's stroke and that slowed us down. But now this time has allowed Bobby to think about what he really likes to do, what he wants to do. And he's so involved in this, writing this music for this play. And I'm enjoying it because, you know, I help write a program of work for it. And like I said, I learned the Sibelius. And so there was, there's a lot that we lost, but there's a lot that we gained. Right. And yeah, that's, and that's a good trade-off because it's made us slow down. From being, you know, running to these different gigs. And that's a hard thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind me. But but what it has helped me to do is to do some back office things that I know I wouldn't have gotten done. Mary mm -hmm. tried 55 plus. Hopefully I'm going to go look up and see if, if my uh, business has been registered. And so that I can start doing the next steps. Because I've you know, operated out of a kind of a hobbyish type thing, you know. Oh, Linda don't need to make no money off of what all, <laughs> all what she does. She just love to do it. No, Linda's about to be six oh next year. You're and just so, a baby girl, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm a pedophile. Stop it, honey. What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> What'd you say, Tony? What'd you say? Oh, no, no, he ain't gonna say that again. <laughs> Our age difference, yes, yes, yes. Um, but I'm over 55, so that's all yeah. that counts. And I got her by 16, 17 years. Yes, he's he's a mature senior. That's good. That's good. Absolutely. She, she but, needed a, she needed a real man. <laughs> she needed an old man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, but. You the fact it. that you got, the fact that we got to be old men, you pay some dues to get there. You ain't lying. Hello. You, you, know, a, you know a thing or two. Because <laughs> uh, I've seen a thing or two. That's yeah. what I'm about. You got, maturity goes a long way. And so yes, I does. appreciate that. And my whole community has been seniors. And, and it's a mm -hmm. wonder that I didn't meet somebody along the way 10 years into this. God waited for the perfect man to find me somebody who had an interest that I wouldn't have even looked at, which was, you know, being an entertainer, because quite naturally it would have made me have to work to make him work. But it's now it's such an easy joy to mm. be, you know, hunker down and to really be able to say, okay, what do you want to do? Let's, let's incorporate, let's do all these things to make it what we want it to be. So I'm really grateful and appreciative to have you guys on. You know, we have at least, oh, with the blues community, we may have a lot more couples, but I know in the jazz community, we have Elena and uh, George Gilliam is a couple. We have uh, Gloria Hendry and Phil, um, what is Phil's last name? Oh, I'm having a blank. But they're they're a jazz couple that we have. Is and it the Phil that plays piano? Yes. He played behind Barbara, didn't he? Yes. Oh, that's a bad dude. Yes, he is. Back in the day with um uh Nancy Wilson. Yeah, I know. He used to arrange for her. Yeah, Phil Wright. Yeah. And then we have uh Phil Upchurch is married. But yeah. it, uh, his wife, it's, he's a guitar player. I know, um, I know him. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of married couples over 55 that I would hopefully one day that they would love to come on and just be able to talk to us. Because when I had the Jazz Abrations uh, live podcast that I was doing, that's what it was about. Just bringing all of our 
jazz and blues legends into the studio and just talking about our lives. But now my focus is keeping us married, folk married. <laughs> you are so crazy, girl. I love you. <laughs> making, sure, making sure that we stay married. <laughs> it's been well, a joy. You're a pioneer. <laughs> Thank you. You really are. I she is. Just and, to do what you, and to do what you do is just, you know, to somebody on the outside, it may look, whoa, she's having fun. Everything's perfect. But I know you went through hell and high water <clears throat> to accomplish what you've accomplished. Oh, I appreciate that. And, you know, June is right around the corner. We're supposed to be downtown. They better open up City Hall so we can go down there again and get our flowers while we're alive. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Her Wesson, if you're watching this, yes, we you better figure out how to get us down there on a secret, on a low low, and give us all more. <laughs> Girl, you have to it. We can just all come down there, get us on bus. Because June is Black Music Month, African American Music Appreciation Month. And mm. he said as long as he was in city council, he would recognize us as, as our, under our Jazzabration um, umbrella. And so hopefully we're not going to be locked down too much longer. Maybe we could come out and celebrate that way. All yeah. jazz and blues legends and everybody could come down. Well, Linda, you have to be, they can't get around you because you're irrepressible. Oh, you, 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 cannot, you cannot be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're breathing, you, you're going to, hey. I've seen you long enough now. I know you can't stop this girl. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I try to just keep it keep it moving. You know, keep it stay busy and stay creative. Even though uh, Facebook, I'm surprised they let my video go this long because they've been messing with me too. I just have to say that. <laughs> Ooh, I wish I was in, uh, ingenious enough, me and you, Rita. We need to create our own online platform. That's what <laughs> All right. I'm working on. Well, thank you for for getting us into this because we've been so busy, actually. I haven't bothered to get involved with Zoom. I used to do Skype. I used to do a lot of live stuff, but I hadn't actually downloaded the Zoom app until you suggested this, and, and it's been fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been our pleasure. Being here with you guys on Candid Conversations with Couples, our married tribe, 55 plus only. Thank you so much. My Thank great discovery, there. my great discovery is that man right there behind you with them pipes. Absolutely. <laughs> so I can't we, tell you what he did to me with that song. Oh, well, we man, definitely, wow. we will connect after this and you guys are going to do something soon. And we'll come back and bring it on live. Real soon. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Linda. Absolutely, my it's dear. It's been great, guys. Have Thanks, a, Tony. Thank have a so great much. evening. And please share, share, share it out so that our friends can see it all over the country. All right. As soon as we get through, I'm going, Tony, I'm going right to my fake book and look up Moon River. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> now, all right. I'll, I'll call him. I'll give him your number so he can, you guys can talk. Absolutely. All right. All, All right. right. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. See you later. See you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.